Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Just want to grab a quick link. So, as the video description indicates, what we're doing here is um, I'm going to revisit the the binoculars and scope effect, and what that's really going to do for us is just kind of revisit in setting up the the overall feel of how a scope's going to look and it's going to work with a zoom and so forth. Wow. Um, let's see. Absolutely being... YouTube has been acting up really oddly lately for me. For those of you who have not gone ahead and added uh, the, the favorites and notifications and all that lovely stuff, link in Discord. But if you're watching this, then you probably already found it. So, Okay, so... We're just going to create a, brand, a blank, a little, little English words, a blank project with nothing in it, and start from scratch. While that's creating, um, I've already prepared a scope reticle for crosshair, like for, you know, like a sniper scope would be. Technically, it's not a sniper scope; it's just a duplex scope, but whatever. Um, Gonna do my usual here and set up a basic system. And I want to go ahead and just create the normals. Maps. Lovely. And we want to create assets. Images. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag in that one that I've already prepared. Now it's a full screen mask, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. And let's see if I can actually remember where I put the binocular one. And it's it's your choice whether um, where's the binocular mask? You want to do a set of binoculars or scope or both or whatever. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where setting this up is really super simple. And I'm just going to create this as a base for us to stand on and we'll put it at negative 10 lovely save all and save our map and this is going to be our test map I held down the shift key thank you alright so that being said, we have nothing. We have no character. We have nothing. We're not going to be able to do a thing. So I'm going to go ahead and add new. Add feature or content pack. And let's add in... You know what? I never use it. So let's add in first person. I'm not going to make this a multiplayer. I'm just making a, a demonstration. This has already got a working gun. So we're good. Tonight's drink of choice. Coffee and cherry... Um, excuse me. Vanilla Coke. So now in our world setting for our map, we want to set to first person game mode. And now if we hit play, we have a mouse cursor which pisses me off to no end. We don't have any projectiles. So let's actually see what is up with that. I thought it was a default thing to have the projectiles. Guess not. You see, we can shoot and do all kind of lovely things. We have no crosshair, and we have no zoom. We can't really aim, can't do any of that fancy stuff. No particle effects, no hit effects, nothing. So, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got to do here. So, we go to our 
blueprints and first person character and as we see construction script attached to component and that's your gun lovely don't care get player view what is it viewpoint lovely never messed with that before um, I never really messed with the um, this viewport okay yep and event graph never mess with this stuff let's see calculate adjusted direction trace shot deal with impact so this is you know it's cool it's a shooting system it works you know it's first person it's not like I'm really crazy about it but Here's what we're going to do. We are going to, first off, we're going to look at a binocular system. And let's go ahead and create some variables back in here. So the first one, you got all these components right here. Um, I'm actually going to start giving them a category. Um, base, gun. And all this is going to do is it won't let me group all of them together. It's just allow me to minimize them. So I don't have to look at all their variables. I can make my own and my own uh, categories. But the key is to be able to uh, minimize it so it cleans up things just a little bit. I, I, I'm all about having good clean um, blueprints and organization just simply because whenever you go back to edit something you know where to look for something if it's in a good location like base gun stuff I don't care about it so I'm gonna just close that so I'm gonna go ahead and we're not gonna have a pickup system in this we're gonna assume that you've already picked up or you default with being able to carry a set of binoculars so um, first thing we want to do is let's scroll in find us a good place to work with and then for your variables what kind of variables do you need um, you need to make sure that um, you are using binox so just a regular boolean is going to be fine for this um, we need to get a keyboard event so we're going to hit the, the letter b so just type in keyboard b and select the b key right there so now we hit the B key. We're going to activate our binoculars. We don't. We're again assuming that we we default with them instead of having to, to find them as a pickup in the world. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to set the with alternate left click, drag it in, and set using binoculars to true. But actually. Before we place that sucker in there, let's put a flip-flop. Now, if you want to have it set to where you use your binoculars and you press the key, you look, and then you let go of the key, it goes away, then you don't need the flip-flop. But I don't like that system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up to where when I press the B key, I'm using my binoculars. When I want to stop using them, I hit the B key again. So... Um, that being the case, we put the flip flop in here, and from A, we want to set using Binox to true. And then from B, we want to set it to false. So that's going to turn our binoculars on and off. We're probably going to reposition this a half dozen times, so um, that's the biggest thing. So we're now using it, now we're not using it. We want that variable so that we can turn things on and off based off of using that because we're going to use a and let's go ahead and drop that right there I didn't change anything in the map but okay we'll save it anyway um, we need to go ahead and create a new folder and we're going to call this widgets we're going to go ahead and create the first one which is going to be 
by Knox underscore W, so we know that it's a widget. And now, here's the fun thing. We can go back to our images, grab our Binoc mask. Now, I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to grab an image. And I'm going to center this to full screen. Then I'm going to go right here and set all these margins to zero. So that's going to stretch this image out to cover the entire screen. I'm going to open up brush and select this arrow and it's going to put our binocular mask in. Compile and save. Now I'm going to go back to my event graph and I am going to delete everything because yeah that's what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to go ahead and right click event tick and from the event tick what we want to do is we want to cast to I was trying to do player underscore base which is my usual first person character I assume yeah first person character I, I never use first person character so this is unusual for me so we want to get player character and what we're wanting to do is we want to find get using binox and we want to go ahead and throw in a branch node again to throw in a branch node in all you have to do is with nothing selected hold down the B key and left click and it'll actually draw one on the map for you or the uh, your event graph so we're gonna ask are, are we using the binox and all we care about is no if we are not using the binox then remove from parent that's going to remove the um, the widget from our view alright so compile and save and that one is done Donsky. So now when we're using our Binox, the next thing we want to do is create a widget. And here we're going to start moving things around. And what we want to do is get player controller. And we're going to shove it right there. The widget we want to use is Binox. And we want to add to viewport. Now that's going to put the binoculars in our face and that's going to um, tell it to go away. So let's actually see what happens when we do this. Alright, I have a damn mouse cursor issue so I gotta fix that. Hit B and I can see I can still move around, do everything like normal, it uses the same aim space, but we're actually seeing the gun here in, in the image. and Mm, good thing, bad thing, whatever. Um, since this is first person, if you look down, the only shadow I see is my gun floating in the air. We can do this a couple different ways. The way that I'm going to do this is the simple way. Mesh 1P. Well, that's the arms. We don't care about that. And that's the gun. So, if we look... Yep, there's our gun. So we'll go back to our event graph and we want to get a reference to FP underscore gun and we want to set visibility leave that unchecked and I'm gonna copy this down here because we're gonna want to turn this back on right there so we can set it true so now let's take a look at that after we do um, event begin play this bugs the living dog crap out of me you guys should know that by now uh, set input to game only and get player controller 
Oh, so annoying. Set show mouse cursor. Leave it unchecked. And I'll put that in the player character. So no matter what map I'm on, it'll automatically do it. Can't stand that crap. Because, yeah, see, now no mouse cursor. So now we hit B for Binox. Well, I can see my hands now still. So we're going to have to do the same thing and get rid of the hands. But we hit B again. Gun's visible again. So let's actually go back in here and... We want to get a reference to Mesh 1P, and that is our arms. And I'm going to drag it in and put it in right there. And I'm going to connect it to the same thing. And I can do the same thing right here. I don't have to set up a new visibility thing, and they can share the same visibility node. So now, compile and save. Whenever I hit play, hit B. There's my binoculars. I don't see my hands. I don't see the gun. I can just view through the binoculars. Since it's first person, we don't have to worry about, oh my god, what about animations and all that stuff? Because we can't see each other any damn way. So it doesn't really matter. You can run around your binox out all day long. Alright, so we hit B, and we're back. Everything is visible again. Awesome, right? Alright. So, let's add some functionality to the binox. Let's make them zoom. Since we have using Binox there, we can come down here and we're going to mouse and what was it? Uh, mouse wheel axis or mouse wheel up and down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to control C and control V. Even though they both say down, I can actually go right there and just pull that up. Mouse wheel up. All right. Here's where dyslexia comes in handy. And I say that with some sarcasm here. Um, what we want to do is use a mouse wheel to control the zoom levels. Okay. Um, I'm going to add another variable in. And I'm going to call this base zoom. And I'm going to set that as a float. Compile, save, and base zoom, I'm going to save that as 90. That is the default for field of view, which is what we're going to manipulate with this. Um, mouse wheel, we're moving it back, is zooming out. Moving it forward is zooming it in. So that's the same kind of functionality we want to carry over, and my dyslexia always gets the best of me, and I don't remember if that's moving it forward is up, is what we're going to assume. So we're going to try that, and if it's wrong, I'll just change it. It's not that difficult. All right, so with that, when we press the mouse wheel or scroll the mouse wheel up, we want to hold down the control key, left click, and drag it in. You get a git. You get a git node. Now, what we want to do is make sure that when we're doing this, we're zooming forward. So wheel up is going to we're going to do float plus float and we're going to get a reference to what exactly um, first person character no we want the camera first person camera see our field of view is 90 that is a default we don't want to go less than that because you can't see negative magnification levels that's just not going to happen you're not going to find binoculars out there on the market that oh this thing has a 4x zoom but it also has a negative 4x zoom what? that just doesn't happen so you're not going to have a negative number so you're never going to go less than 90 
which will simulate 1x magnification level. So we'll start off with changing it by 5. Okay. Now when we press, we want to get a reference to our first person camera. And set field of view. We use the first one on the list there. And from there, we're going to drag this to here. So we're going to get the base zoom, add five to it when we do that. So let's see. Um, something else that we forgot to add in here which is very important because we need to make sure that we're using our um, and I'm going to set it up in here as well I'm going to get a reference to our first person camera really quickly let's finish off this part and we want to grab this guy, control C, control V, first person camera. We want to set field of view to our base zoom right there. So when we stop using the um, the binocs, we want to ensure that our field of view is back to normal again. So what we did forget to put in here is a branch node. And we need to be asking one question. Why haven't I shot the neighbor's dog yet? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? So we need to ask, are we using the, um, the Bunox? If it's true, then we need to be able to do this. So let's see I'm sorry my OCDs are, are really kind of making this take longer all right so let's see if that actually works the way we want it to let's hit B for Binox and that's backwards so I'm going to break that and throw that down there and let's put this here and try that okay hit B for Binox um, no I might have had it right the first time And field of view, first person camera. And it's going the wrong way. It's trying to. Yeah, it's trying to go the wrong way. So let's let's just see here. Let's change it by. 15 and just see something a bit more drastic on it so we get uh, a better see it's going backwards so let's try float minus float Grab that, put it in there, break that node, and that one. Let's shove that out of the way for now. And throw that in there. And we're going to change this to 10. So, yeah, pushing it forward does zoom it. So, 
So if I push the mouse wheel forward, that's zooming it in by 10 now. So it's taking 10 away from the, um, the field of view. So why isn't it actually, it's not working until we go into Binox. And base zoom, and we're getting the. Um, we don't need that right now. Um, we need to go from the first person camera, and we need to get field of view. Sorry. And once we get our field of view, then we can add 10 to it. That makes more sense. All right, so we go in here. And as we keep pushing forward on the mouse, it's the wrong direction. So we wanted to actually go the other way. So let's try that. So now we'll pull the mouse wheel back. Now I like it the other way. Because whenever you pull your mouse wheel back, you're zooming out. So we'll do it like that. All right, so we're going to need to clamp a max value in here at some point. Um, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So like we did before, we want to, and we can actually use the same one here. Grab that branch node. Verify that we're using our binocs. We can actually do the same thing here. Try to use as much of the, the same ones so we can keep it as clean as possible. So what we're doing here is we're doing a plus. So what we can do here is do a minus. Control C and Control V so we have another one of those in here. And let's connect that to here. And we'll do that. And we'll do that. And that. And we'll do 10 here. So that they match out. So let's hit compile and save and take a look at it. Hit play. Everything is good. Mouse wheel doesn't do anything. Hit B. We, we can zoom back, which we don't want to do. We can zoom forward, which we're going to have to set a max value to this because, yeah, that's a little bit weird. So let's hit this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, 8 seems to be the limit. So that means that we're adding 80 to it. So as Mr. Magical Calculator says, 80 plus 90 is equal to 170. So that's our max is 170. So what we want to do here is we want to clamp that at 170 for the max value. So which is weird is we're doing this. Um, let's try setting. No, we don't need that. Max zoom. Compile. We're going to set that to 170 and then compile and save one more time. So we have that variable saved. So, if we know that our first-person camera 
our field of view is 90. What we're going to do here is we're increasing this. So if we're adding 10 to this here, what we want to do here is um, we're setting this value here. So what we can do here is drag off from here and do float. So we want to see if we are greater than 170. Actually, no, greater than max zoom. Connect that into here. Get a branch node. So if our current zoom is greater than 170, then we want to control C, control V, and that. Now I could have used this one here. Doesn't matter, it'll still work. So that'll clamp it to our max value of 170. And that should, oh, excuse me, camera. Drag it all the way over to here. So let's see what we got here. And it be, so what we're doing is as we're going back this is actually weird it's working backwards from the way that I would think it's doing so adding to your field of view is actually reducing your your, your zero or your, your zoom level so if you're looking right here this is 90 this is 90 so if you're zooming in you're reducing your field of view. So you're subtracting from your field of view. So in that case, max zoom should then become, and let's take this off of here, max zoom should then be 10. If we set max zoom as, as that, uh, 10, then we can do basically the same thing here. We want to get um, from field of view, get float less than max zoom. Oh, yeah, my dys the little, uh, dyslexia is fun, right? Control C, Control V, let's speed things up a little bit. So we'll grab off from field of view. Let's just go ahead and put that in there. We're going to delete that. We're going to go to there. I know this looks like spaghetti, but we know what's going where. And we need to connect this to here. So that should set my, my max zoom. So now what we're trying to do is we'll set up another one, which will be min zoom. And that will hit compile and save. Hmm. No, we don't actually need that. We need just base zoom. And we could actually take this and put that in here, get base zoom, connect it in there. So if it's less than 90, then we want to set it to 90. We're just trying to do a method of, of clamping so that when we get in here, I can't go, I can't go back. I can't zoom negative right now, but I can zoom forward and 
That seems a little bit much. So let's try taking a little bit off of that. So our our max zoom of 10, let's change that to 20. And see how that looks. Nope, a little bit too much. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So eight was our, our max. So 90, take away 80, it should have been 10. So I'm not sure. Let's compile and save and try that one more time. Yeah, see, it's still trying to go one too far, but we're looking at something that's relatively close. So let's back up a little bit and and see. It's going one one too far. So hell, let's try it at forty. Binox. Yeah, it's still tr trying to get too far. But, you know, we can sit here and keep clamping this around, seeing what our, our minimums, maximums, things like that are. And it should be good there. So that's our binoculars, and we can actually zoom in, but we can't zoom back past a certain point, and we wanted to, to lock out a certain amount there as well. So that's a basic binocular system. That's assuming that you started off automatically with binoculars in your inventory, and you want to be able to add them in just by hitting a keystroke and having full control being able to zoom with it and that kind of stuff now you could do the same thing with a rifle scope let's take a quick look at that it's going to be the same basic system so that way we got this self-contained we can move it out of the way so with all these, let's go ahead and park those. Let's give them a category of Binox. So now we can do that. We m can use the base zoom from there as well. Um, so that's a good thing. Because we know that our base zoom is going to be 90. We don't have to keep using new variables for everything when we know that um, we have a fixed variable of 90 for our, our normal zoom level. So that's that. That's the binoculars done. So um, since this is a first person shooter and as we're running around we have a gun. It used to be that whenever you did this it would shoot a ball out. I don't know why they changed that. So we want an actual scope. We right click. Right click seems like a good logical thing to do for getting a scope, right? So let's do that. So what I'll do here is I will come in here and I will mouse right or right mouse button. So when we hit the right mouse button, we want to first off get a branch. Are we using the binox? We don't want to use the binox and our gun at the same time. 
So we'll, we'll start off with this as a branch asking about that. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as I did before, and I'm going to use a flip-flop. This will be something that if you want to set up a menu and have settings for your character or players to say, okay, I, I want them to be able to say, do I want to do it momentary or, or do I want it on a flip-flop? You could set it up to where you could change that option, but I'm not going to get into that. That's more advanced stuff. It's not a, really that advanced. It just takes a while to do all that. So now, we're going to ask, are we using the binox? Because we don't want to use the binoculars and our scope at the same time. Next thing we need to do is go to our widget, and let's create a new user interface, widget blueprint, and we're going to call this scope underscore w, and I'm going to open that. I'm just going to go back in here to our binox, go to our graph, and we can steal everything in here. Control C and then close that. Go here, go to our graph, delete this, Control V. Now we have it all in here. However, we're going to need to delete that, go back into our character, create a new variable, call it using scope question mark, and we need to change that to a boolean just like a boolean cube. So we'll save that and then come back in here get using a scope. If we're no longer using the scope then go away, compile and save. Now we can go back to our designer graph and what I'm going to do, same thing, not a button, idiot. Grab an image, anchor it, full screen, come back here, go to my images, go to the duplex, which is my scope. It's a duplex crosshair. So I want to zero out my offsets. Hit that, and there we go. It's going to get mask off the rest of the screen. It's all going to be black, and we're just going to have the crosshair only. Compile and save. So now, what we've got is when we hit the right mouse button, it is going to ask, are we using a Binox? No. Um, then on the flip-flop, what we want to do here is, we're doing before, we need two of those guys. We want to set is using scope to true. And on the downside, when we hit it again, we want it to be not true. So that'll make it go away. So after this, then we just do uh, create widget. We want to use the scope widget. Get player controller. And then we want to add to viewport. And that technically will work. And then if we want to add the zoom in, then um, we'll have to basically copy what we did before and just set it up a little bit differently. So as we're playing, we're running around. Um, if we hit the right mouse button, why well, didn't it work? Um, because wrong one there. There we go. Now it's going to look a little squished down and egg shaped because I'm playing in, in selected viewport. However, we still see our gun and our fingers, so we got to do like we did before and we need to get a reference to mesh 1P and FP gun and let's go ahead and control C and control V because we're going to need them over here as well. And I'm just going to need this up just a hair because yeah. Now we come off of that and set visibility. Control C. I'm just going to paste another one down there. Link both of them to the target and link that to there. And leave that unchecked. 
connect both of these to the target bring this up here and check that so now what it's going to do is when we're not using the scope it's going to turn those on again and when we're using the scope it's going to turn them off so compile and save and now do 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 do, do we have a gun bang bang oh let's use the scope awesome right so now what if we want to add some zoom to the scope then what we do is the same basic thing we did over here get a reference to our first person camera and we want to set field of view the first one and we want to set that to um, set that base zoom okay um, we'll get base zoom and plug that in there so that's our base zoom level so we're forcing it when we're, we're not using the scope we're gonna go back to our normal field of view come out and save and honestly we can come back over here to our scope mechanics and I am going to copy all of it paste it back in here and we're gonna make some changes because we're not using the binox howdy 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 actually it didn't rain today I thought it was gonna rain here today and I'm like ah oh, shit got my new belt sander I'm ready to go make cool stuff and I made a couple more prototype blade shapes and one new handle shape and absolutely loving this handle shape auto save you can kiss my ass but um, I like the blade shape on this one and I like the handle shape on it 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 fits my hand really well so this one will become a reality it will become a blade it's got a deep long finger groove here so yeah I was, I was really happy to be able to get out there and and work with this uh, new belt sander I got a buttload of different uh, uh, temporary uh, belts and I, I know you can't tell because it's you know wood and it's I got pictures up in discord as well but you can see there's a shine to it believe it or not the edge you know testing uh, making bevels and everything else too um, the edge on here is almost sharp enough to cut paper as it is I mean it that's it's almost painful to, to do that it, it's sharp and that's wood um, the other one was this blade shape and it just looks really really common you know straight up and down um, work with hand sizes I use my hand <laughs> what works good for me um, and that's the thing is I'm actually will be using Unreal Engine 4 to build a knife building application and <coughs> get rid of this using binox using scope and what I'll do is I will create a system for building a Kniffy in Unreal Engine 4 and when you select a handle so type then it changes on the screen it actually shows a different handle um, you change okay I want um, ironwood or uh, we well, see that uh, you know that's the other thing too is um, not everybody's hands are the same size so I'm coming up with a way of making a chart of you know, different people's hands and I would assume that it would be taking a piece of paper wrapping it around your hand and then unwrapping the piece of paper and then measuring that in millimeters or in centimeters or millimeters is best so that you get an actual 
millimeter size for the outside you know, of your hand and that's going to give a basic hand size. Yay, we has a sniper zoom. Awesome, right? <laughs> so we can turn it on and off. We can not use it. Now, we could actually, if we wanted to, put a little small red dot in the center of the screen. Yeah, you you're, use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out by doing that. Um, and say if you're zoomed all the way in and you hit right mouse button, it automatically fixes your zoom back to normal again. Same thing with the binox. Whenever you zoom in, like, okay, I'm zoomed all the way in. I hit the B key to go out of Binox, and you go back to your normal view mode. So you got... Dun, 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 Yes, cool sound effects, huh? Um, so you can zoom in, like, hey, what's that guy over there doing? I'm right-clicking, and I can't get my crosshair to work. So now I can come out of binocular mode, go into my scope mode, zoom in on that sucker over there, and bam! Blow his face off. And then... And uh, hit the right mouse button again and come out of zoom mode. So if you don't want it to stay, if you want it to be momentary, see, I, I push the button and I let go and it stays on. But if you don't want that to to happen, then essentially, instead of putting a flip flop in, you can just take this flip flop out. And I'll show just for this case. I like it with the flip flop. I prefer it to be that way. So I'm just going to break these lines, and then from pressed, and from using Binox, false, we're going to go to there. And really and truly, you'd want to go ahead and then put a second one in here, link that in here. And it's extra work to actually do it this way, but not by much. Faults come into right here. Now compile and save. Now if you go into your zoom mode, you zoom in, as soon as you let go of the right mouse button, you stop zooming. And I don't like that. I've played games that was like that and yeah, it's just annoying. Well, you could. You could do that as well. Um, I'm actually going to delete you. Delete you. And then I'm going to go to here instead and fix that back. So now this is a toggle system. Right mouse button will toggle your your scope mode and you can let go of it and, and be able to okay zoom it in, zoom it back. You can't zoom back to negative zoom levels. But but you can zoom in farther and farther and farther. And see so you have aim at this corner right here you don't have any scope sway in this I personally hate scope sway but it, it's semi realistic thing because if I take my hands off then you know it's not moving if you had that into effect then if you want to hit a key to be able to stop it from happening then it's just, well, you know, easy. It's kind of a no-brainer on that. Um, you set it up to where your, your, your sway, no, excuse me, scope sway, um, is when, it, when you're in that mode, you set it up as a custom event. And essentially what you can do is activate or deactivate the component or you can turn it on and off with essentially just are you using the scope yes um, hold down the spacebar and it will 
um, depressed, you know, it will stop the uh, the scope sway or set the sway variable amount to a, a different, like 10 versus 50, and just change that number over. I, I personally, I'm not going to add it in because it's kind of annoying whenever you're setting up a fast-paced run-around single-player shooter. So that's what we just did in this short video of one hour of setting up a scope system and binocular system with the idea that you already have the binocular spawned in. The other video that I did the other day was in third person mode where you can't use the binoculars until you have them. Like, hey look, there's a pair of binoculars. Bang, you pick it up and now, okay, I can do that. And then I created a simple animation that w really worked with it. Um, same basic system for checking your zoom levels. Um, come out of that mode. I didn't do the scope mode. Like I said, you, you see it right now, it looks weird. I, I hope this is very helpful to a lot of people because it's so simple that, you know, like I said the other day, whenever I did the binocular video, I'd never done it before. So I said, screw it, I'm going to do it. And I did it on live stream so that if I screwed it up, you guys can see me screwing it up. Jump, bitch, jump! <laughs> Alright, so I, I never do first person. I never do single person games and that kind of stuff. I always like multiplayer. But, you know what, I I thought this would be a useful video. Like I said, it looks skewed right now, but if you go over here and hit play, standalone game, Save selected, yes, because I didn't do anything to the map whatsoever, but it's you know wants me to save the map anyway. So now, if I go into scope mode, see it's perfectly round. The one thing I didn't do here, and then we'll have a way of getting out of the damn game. There's no escape key, there's no quit key. I gave somebody shit about that the other day. So we, excuse me, thank you. Um, really quickly, let's go ahead and go in back into our blueprints. And we already had it up, never mind. And let's go over here. Now, this is really, really complicated um, for now if you want to just hit escape and kill the game. I don't recommend doing it that way, but keyboard escape. This is a very complicated thing to do here, okay? To be able to to to, to kill the game. Yeah, I, 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 well, I grew up with games before that, so this is complicated. I'm gonna hit the escape key, and I want to quit game. I know it's complicated. Quit game. And then, okay, here we go. Um, get player controller. It's complicated. I don't, but you know, that's a very complicated system to do. So now, if you're playing a standalone game, oh yes, because I used, I did something to the fucking map. I didn't do shit to the damn first person example map. The hell is wrong with this stupid thing? Did you see me do anything to the first person map? Did, did I do anything to the map at all? No. So okay, now we're running out of game. Hey, look, I'm, I'm blowing shit up. Hey, look, I got a scope. Hey, you look, look, I got binocs. Ooh, I can zoom in. Okay, then I can hit escape and boom, kills the game. I don't want to do that. I actually want to be a hell of a lot more complicated. Um, we go to my widget folder, and I want to use a new interface. Escape menu underscore w. Save game video is going to be coming up soon. Um, I've been, you know, ignoring doing it for a while, and I, you know what? Can set it up and and. It's not that difficult to do. It just takes a while to get all the branches and all the little things done. Um, 
what I want to do here is set up. Now, I'm not going to do a complicated, cool one where it, it has a background blur and all that stuff. I mean, I've never done the background blur. Uh, not an input. Um, I'm assuming it's not difficult to do. It's something they added in as part of this. Special effects, background blur. And let's anchor that to the full screen, whatever. I've never tried it before, so. So let's try that. Put a background blur in. And I'm going to set that Z order to negative 5. It's going to be behind every damn thing. And then what I want to do is go to Panel, Vertical Box. Oh, um, no. Um, I didn't want you to do that there. Um, canvas panel. I want to add it directly in so that I can, there we go. That I can move its buttocks around. Alright, so we'll do that. We'll anchor that to the center of the screen. No, you asshole. Stop being an ass. We're going to resize this. Don't worry about that. But let's go ahead and add in a butthole, I mean button, into our vertical box. And we're going to put some text on it. And we're going to go ahead and... Extra? No. Um... Primitives. Spacer. I'm going to put that in there also. And then I'm going to control C and control V. And then I'm going to go to my spacer and I'm going to set this to 50. Nope, wrong. I'll do it 50 in the Y. Why? Because I said so. Um, let's go ahead and give this a good size of. 500 by yeah. oh which just quit being an ass now yeah, let's try it at 150 so we'll do here position would then be negative 250 and negative what 75 Sounds lovely. And we're going to call this our exit button. Change the text. Quit game. Going to center it. Lovely. Now you can decorate these however you want. I'm not going to because I don't care. I don't freaking care right now. <laughs> resume game lovely and then come back in here and let's call this retard I mean zoom game and we want to do that so it centers it lovely now what I'll do is I'll click on the exit button and I can scroll down here and unclick Hey, you guys can eat shit. So, unclick for you and resume. Unclicked. So, what we're going to do here is unclicked exit button. We want to, here it is, complicated again. Quit game. I know it's complicated, but we'll deal with it somehow. Get player controller. Okay, that button's done. And finale is resume game. When we click the resume game button, we want to remove from parent. Another complicated button. 
All right, let's see what the hell it looks like. And we're going to just put it back in this mode again. Except for one thing. Nope, go away. No. Because I are stupid. I blame you. I blame you. You'll let me do it. We press the escape key. We want to do something. We want to create widget. The widget we want to create is escape menu. We want to get player controller. We want to add to viewport. And we want to set show mouse cursor to true. And now we got to kill it after we get done here. So, nope, get back down here. So here's what we're going to do is when we hit the escape key, we're going to create the um, that menu we just had and activate the mouse cursor. Compile and save. And in this, it couldn't just be that simple. Nope, it couldn't. We have to cast to first person character. So when we say, okay, get off my damn screen. Get our player character. In fact, I am actually going to break the crap out of you. And I'm not going to put you there. I'm going to put you here. You here. And we're going to set show. Excuse me. Excuse me. Set show. Oh. Um, no. Shit, you're stupid. Um, get player character is fine for here because what we got to do is we're doing player controller there so god I'm being stupid I are being stupid right now it's past the one hour mark I'm only good for about an hour uh, when we click the resume game, what we want to do is get player controller. Uh, and then we want to set input to game only. Now, another thing we could do with this is when we, if we want to get really complicated and stuff, is when we actually go in here you know what I don't even need you I'm just gonna drag you from here we can set it up so it the character gets stopped so you can no longer move so we're gonna set input to game mode only and then we just want to set show mouse cursor to false so we get rid of the mouse cursor and then remove from parent. So we're setting it to game mode only here. So I hit compile and save. Go back here. When we're creating this widget, let's actually drag this out. And set input to UI only. And I'm going to connect that in here and that to there. And now widget to focus gets connected there. Player controller gets connected to here. I 
and there we go. So now when we hit the escape key, it's going to create the widget. It's going to set. It's going to stop us essentially. We're going to our input is going to be for UI only, so we're not going to be able to walk around. And then we're going to add this to our viewport and show the mouse cursor. And let's see if I broke anything. I didn't save. I didn't change anything in this freaking map. The hell's wrong with you, Unreal Engine 4? Alright, so we're playing the game. Yay, running around. Hey, look, I got a scope. Hey, I got some binoxes. Oh, let's hit escape. Oh. Um, let's see, I want to resume game. But, you know what? I'm done. Let's go ahead and quit game. Yay, it works. All right, so that's, that's three awesome features for this video. In just an hour and ten minutes of your life, um, what we have done, let's close that, and let's close that. We have created, and I'm going to go through this nice and slowly. Vodka by an ox, yep. Now, one thing I didn't notice here was uh, on the escape, where the hell's the, the background blur? I don't see a background blur. I thought I said background blur. Um, apply alpha to blur, blur strength zero. Let's write 10. I, I don't know. Compile and save. Now let's hit play. Because I'm using the escape key, um, I can't just do it in the standalone. So hit escape. There we go. Now we have background blur. All right. So what we've created in this video is we have created a scope where you can right click and, oh, look, awesome scope. And I can zoom in and I can zoom back. Wait, does it even work? Oh, I guess it does. But now, when I hit the right mouse button, I come out of my scope mode, I go back to my normal view. I want to see some detailed, detailed carnage here, so let's hit the binox, and let's zoom in. Yay. And then when you hit B again, you come out of your binocular mode. When you're in B, you can't use your, your scope mode. When you're in scope, uh-oh. We forgot something. One small fix. And we are done. So let's take a look at our scope. And using Binox faults, then it can do stuff. Um, so we need to be able to come back in here to this and add in one little minor thing. Drag you back over here. Let's chuck in a branch node. And since we created it, using scope now it's going to check to see if we're using our scope or not and if we are not then we can continue all right so <clears throat> now sorry minor fix eat a dick um so here's what we did in this video. Let's let's conclude it now. Uh, we have created a quick little standalone first-person shooter template where we can walk around the map and shoot crap. We can hit right mouse button, and it's a toggle. So hit right mouse button, and you can now use your middle or your mouse wheel to zoom in and actually shoot with a zoomed-in mode. Yeah, I, I, I do all kinds of stuff with um, the widgets, but 
sometimes it's easy to not combine everything together. Sometimes it's easier to combine things together. Something like this, the widget for, for this. Now I can't use my binocs while I'm in my scope mode. So now I can right click to come out of scope mode, hit B for binocs. So now I can't use my scope until I come out of that and go back into that. So if I'm zoomed all the way in, I come out to my normal view again. So what we've done in this video is we have created the right mouse button to give us a scope and we can use our mouse wheel to zoom in and out and it shoots. Okay, right mouse button again to come out of zoom. Hit B for binoculars and zoom in, zoom out. And hit B to come out of binocular mode. So that's what we have created in this video. And the final thing we've added in is hit the escape key. Get a little bit of a background blur going on. And we can decide if we want to resume game and go back in here. Keep blowing crap up. Or we can hit escape and hit quit game. And it shuts it all down. All right. Since there was no more questions on that, shut up. No more questions. I said no more questions. Don't let me come over there. Anyway, so any more questions, just hit me up on Discord, and I will help you out with that. But go back to the video, pause it, fast forward, rewind, do whatever. Um, this was super simple. It's really easy um, to create the binoculars. If, and I guess it could be nice, if you guys want my binocular mask and my duplex mask that I made myself, dang it, created these on my own time but if you want them let me know and I'll, I'll chuck them right into uh, Discord they're um, both PNG files and the, like I said whenever you're you're in it the um, the Bionoc mask is just that it it's clear in the center and just has a black surround around the edge and the scope is just a circle with a duplex crosshair so if you want those two let me know and I'll post them into uh, Discord and if you want to play in this project and just kind of goof around with it, I don't know if I'll upload it or not, but if you guys want it, then you know, whatever. Uh, it's really, there's not much here. All I did was create a blank project, added a first person um, template, added in my two um, uh, images, and then created a few blueprints and a few widgets, and that was it. So, let me know if you want them, and I'll upload them if I need to. Um, if you want to see more stuff done with a first-person template, let me know, and I'll keep screwing around with this. People ask me, why do you start projects on, on YouTube and then not finish them? Because nobody freaking cares. Why would I keep hammering out a tutorial video on something if I'm not getting feedback from the community? You guys got to let me know on Discord hey that tutorial sucks or that series sucks don't do it anymore hey we want to see more of this you guys gotta let me know if I start something and I don't get any support from you guys I'm not gonna continue it I'll pick up and start something else hell my ADHD that works just fine for me but if you want to see more of something I will keep doing more of something if you want to see more of first person shooter stuff let me know I will be working towards setting up a video for save game soon, currency system, um, vendor system, simple AI systems, things of that nature. Those videos will be coming soon, but you guys got to let me know on Discord what you want to see. All right, I'm done. I'll be on Discord for a little while, and then I'm going to play some damn video games. I'm going to entertain myself. I've been doing knife stuff all day long and now doing Unreal Engine 4 stuff, which this is, both are, are fun. So, But I'll be in and out of Discord for a few more hours. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys soon.